Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for the uh, course directors for having us here. Great course. Thank you for this opportunity. So I'm going to present a case that uh, happened a few months uh, into my attending job. And I had, uh, for full disclosure, had presented this in 2015 SEAI uh, I blew it session two. So this is a 10-year-old girl weighed uh, 34 kilogram, admitted with severe dilated cardiomyopathy, multi-system organ dysfunction, ascites, pleural and pericardial effusions. Uh, echo, as you will sh uh, see later, shows severe LA dilation, MR, LV and diastolic diameter was increased, LV dysfunction, TR, RV systolic dysfunction too, and intact atrial septum. The patient's uh, initial echoes, as you can see, uh, severe dilated cardiomyopathy. So the patient uh, was crashed onto ECMO uh, because of uh, poor perfusion and acidosis and developed severe LA hypertension as you'd expect in some of these patients with uh, pulmonary edema, pulmonary hemorrhage. So referred to the cath lab in the middle of the night for a, a blade septostomy. The initial measurements, RA pressure was 21 and LA was 46 when we got in. And this <coughs> procedure was done with the TE. And as you can see, this atrial septum is uh, bulging towards the right atrium, uh, significantly so. Again, shows the poor function. Um, so I didn't save the initial fluoro, um, but you know, this is the first few months after my fellowship at the height of my confidence. So I didn't pay much attention to um, where the sheath was, you know, you know, we went through the transeptal, uh, how we go in, but I was pretty confident about my fluoro landmark, so didn't pay much attention to the TEE, is all I can say. But uh, this is, you know, one clip that I got from the sheath positioning, so. And then this is uh, an actual blade and balloon. Uh, I mean, the blade park balloon septostomy. Uh, anybody want to comment on what you're seeing here? Bad, right? You don't want to comment. <laughs> so basically, I I have the blade open in the aortic root, and I'm, you know, I still remember, and I still remember it in my nightmares too. Um, I felt a lot of resistance than what you expect from trying to blade a thin septum, uh, and obviously I was in the aortic root trying to blade the aortic root. Uh, so that's what you see here. As you can see, it's pulling, it's tugging, you can see the heart moving and then it pops right there. And then uh, I'm still paying no, paying no attention to my uh, TEE and the TEE doctor said, I see something unusual and this is what you see. So what we have created is an aortic root to RA fistula um, and you know also to the LA at this point too. You can see some flow. and. The patient is obviously on ECMO, and, <clears throat> and the TEE shows a severe aortic insufficiency. We did a transthoracic echo. Uh, this is abdominal aorta, again, shows hollow diastolic floor reversal, so severe AI. Fortunately, there is no pericardial effusion, no tamponade. The patient is on ECMO. So we were able to stabilize the patient with uh, increased ECMO flow, with, even with severe AI, volume, blood transfusion, epinephrine infusion. Um, so I was uh, persistent and went back in. So this time I saved some fluoro. So we are back in the LA with the blade uh, biplane. Um, and this time you have a much better sheath position. And so this is just the park blade. Um, you know, this goes through the sheath and you have the sizes here. And the length that you are saying is this uh, length of the blade, it comes in three different lengths. So once you have a nice sheath position in the LA, you put this up here and open the blade and pull it back. And it, this uh, second time it went uh, pretty okay. So this is the, uh, open it in the LA, you uh, take the sheath back out into the, almost about the IVCR junction and pull it. Uh, with the position lateral and slightly anterior is uh, what, what has been described and taught. Uh, so that second time it went okay. Uh, this is the TE with the blade coming down and it's blading. You see a small opening and it's in a, pl a pretty decent place. So we ballooned those um, small opening. 
<clears throat> and uh, this is just the TE, and you have a nice hole. So the LA hypertension is relieved, but you now have severe uh, aortic insufficiency. So the patient was brought back to the ICU, and this patient had severe um, you know, uh, RV and LV dysfunction from the dilated cardiomyopathy, had thought about a BIVAD, but this was not the plan. The patient had to go back to the OR first thing in the morning and get a BIVAD placed, and then at the same time, they completely closed the aortic valve uh, because the VAD is not gonna work effectively if you have severe AI. And this is the intraoperative findings. <clears throat> Just to orient, I mean, sorry, this is um, not intraoperative. This is an explant after the transplant was done. Uh, absolutely, yep. This will be bad, yep. Uh, so, so this is, um, you know, you have this probe in the right coronary, then in the left coronary ostium. So they had completely closed to the valve leaflets, and you can see, looking this, this is the aortic root, and it had kind of torn through. So what was described in the, you know, intraoperative findings and later in the explanted heart, was the posterior leaflet and the sinus was torn into the right atrium, uh, basically. So just to give you uh, some anatomical background, uh, we talked about this, about the transverse sinus uh, yesterday. So this is the aortic root, right atrium, interatrial septum, and the left atrium. So it causes an aortic sinus bulge. The posterior sinus uh, creates a bulge in the right atrium anteriorly. And this is definitely, if you go anterior with your transeptal, this is where you're going to enter. Um, safe transeptal puncture, um, again, it depends on your experience. You don't have to use a lot of this. Uh, sometimes uh, if complicated anatomy or distorted anatomy, you can use a liver face LA angiogram uh, to kind of mark the contours of the left uh, atrium and the atrial septum. And then you confirm the needle tip with the pressure oximetry contrast. You can put an O and 4 wire through the needle, make sure it curls up in the LA. Uh, catheter in the aortic root. This is not quite in the aortic root, but you can kind of mark the aortic root with that and obviously use TE or ice for this. Uh, blade septostomy was described a long time back, like we said. Put, open it in the left atrium and pull it back on the, at least on the lateral view, it's uh, a, a left and anterior orientation when you pull it back. And described by Dr. Park in 82, even at that time, lots of complications with this procedure, 10% uh, risk of cardiac perforation from a 1999 paper. So uh, thinking back what I could have done uh, to avoid an immediate uh, referral to the cardiac surgery and Closing the valve, we, I could have thought about putting a device uh, in the aortic root because at that point the patient is supported on ECMO. Uh, doesn't matter if we compress the coronary. We had given up on this heart in favor of a transplant already, was not expecting recovery. So uh, that was uh, a thing that we could have done to avoid sending the patient immediately to the OR. <clears throat> Alternatives to blade and balloon, um, obviously to decompress the LA, you can try to use intraatic balloon pump, tandem heart or impeller. Surgical LA cannulation, um, and then the transeptal puncture, and instead of doing the blade, which I don't think a lot of people are using anymore, it has fallen out of favor. You can definitely use a transeptal puncture, then do a septal stent, or just a balloon itself uh, might work in this area. This definitely was not a thick septum at the time. So um, it's not an acceptable method, I guess, anymore. Uh, but something in case you need it for a very thick septum or you know some technique that you can, it's technically more difficult with a bulging atrial septum. And a thorough understanding of the atrial anatomy and possible complications, I think that's relevant for any of our procedures. That's the end of my presentation.